Stop your renovation right now. I've got seven rules that you need to know before you swing that sledgehammer. Coming up. and this is Old Home Rescue, where we believe we save the future by rescuing the past. Here at Old Home Rescue, we help you get your house right. If this is your first time with our channel, please support our mission by subscribing. So this video is for anybody thinking of remodeling an older house. It doesn't have to be historic for these rules to apply because restorations can happen in houses built in 1880 and 1980. And remember, all the links and resources that I may talk about are listed in the description below. So what is restoration? So the National Park Service defines restoration as basically returning a property to a specific period in time. So this means basically if you own a home built in 1950, you're gonna remove all the elements that happened after that and return it just the way it was to 1950. So this definition isn't really practical for most of us because our houses aren't museums. Let's look for a different definition. For that, we're gonna look at the National Park Service definition for rehabilitation. So the basic definition of rehabilitation is we acknowledge that properties and homes need to change over time, but we seek to restore the original defining character of that property. You know, here in this video and on this channel and across all of our platforms, you hear me talk a lot about restoration. Well, when I use that word, by definition, what I'm specifically talking about according to the National Park Service is rehabilitation. So question, do you think that houses should be restored according to that definition? Or are you a bigger fan of rehabilitation? Leave your answer in the comments below. So now we've got the definitions out of the way. I've got seven rules for restoration, but I wanna warn you, number seven, if you've already remodeled your home and you've done it the way that all the TV shows show, all the TV shows show you how to do it, I'm probably gonna offend you just a little bit and I'll apologize in advance. So number one, repair the home's original features. And this is a given. And I just started right off the bat with a simple one. Your house was built in a specific point in time and that's what makes it beautiful and unique. I don't care what your house is. I don't care if it's a 1980 ranch or a 1918 craftsman. Leave it the way that it was, or at least look to restore those elements that make it unique. Why remove the historic millwork and elements or popular in that time period out of your home for something that you can get in any home center that looks like everything that's on TV? Restore those elements. Bring those elements back. Number two is to use the property for its originally intended purpose. Now, this has kind of got like three parts to it. First of all, if it was a house, when you can, keep it a house. People need houses, so keep them houses. But the other way that this can be applied is if the house was a fourplex, leave it a fourplex. If it was a duplex, leave it a duplex. If you need a larger house, buy a larger house. Don't take a large square footage and put it all together to make it one. The other is leave the rooms where they are. This is mostly done in the kitchens where everybody guts the house from the front to the back and makes their house look like a bowling alley. This will also save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars that when you're looking for a home to renovate and buy, buy one that is as close to what you want as you can find. You're gonna find a house that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars only to put more hundreds of thousands of dollars in it to look like something it's not currently. That doesn't make any sense. If you want a house that's an open floor plan, find a house that's an open floor plan. Don't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars making one that's not one that is. So next, retain and preserve additions. The big reason why I retain these is one, they do also have historical significance. They tell the story of the house. The other is the environmental impact. Demo and deconstruction is so expensive. And all of that waste ends up where? ends up in the landfill. So number four, we want to replace with authenticity. You know, it's a lot like number one, we talked about restoring and repairing the original elements of your home, but what if those elements are missing? Well, if those elements are missing or too far deteriorated and cannot be restored or repaired, when we have to go with replacement, we want to replace with something that authentically matches the time period and those original features. Number five, we want to add on to the home with integrity. You know, 
Sometimes you got to add on, right? You got the right house. Maybe, maybe it's a house that you were given. Maybe it's on a piece of farmland. I grew up on a farm. We had to add on to our house. But you want to add on in a way that builds value in your house. So the first thing you want to do if you're adding on is you want to make sure that you can identify the original structure and the add-on structure. And a lot of times people identify this by changing the cladding on the outside or offsetting the house just a little bit so that you can tell where the new is at and the old is at. Another thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the addition does it blow out the original in size. This is something that is so corny looking when you see somebody do it, right? They have, we don't want to have an add-on that just like shadows the original house. It just doesn't look right and it's going to take away value from your house. You might finally have a house that fits everybody, but when they all move out, nobody is going to want to buy that monstrosity. The next thing we want to do if we're adding on is we do want to bring around some of those character defining details of the time. We don't want to faux it. We don't want to make it look fake and phony. We don't want to go over the top with it, but there are light design details that we can bring over. So if you're thinking about adding on, you need to check out our video, the four books that you need to read before you restore your house. So number six, Never add faux features. Now, I know this is gonna be slightly offensive because everybody loves shiplap, but that's a faux feature, right? You're adding something, you know, houses here in Oklahoma, we don't have shiplap in our houses, not on the inside. Uh, our, our walls are plaster and lath. Underneath that, nothing. So you don't wanna add something fake and phony to your house. So when I did the TV show with HGTV, we worked on this house and it was a beautiful, simple American four square. We had pictures of it from the 20s and 30s that really showed it kind of in its prime. But somebody in the 80s or 90s decided that they wanted a Victorian house. And so they took this simple house and a 1980s, 90s kind of mock Victorian threw up all over it. And it was hideous. And it took value away. Why do I know it took value away? It was the last house to sell and get renovated on the street. And during the renovation for the show, we removed tons of elements. We removed things like faux Greek columns and bedrooms to metal ceilings that weren't appropriate for the time period or the house. All of that had to come down and it all looked cheap and ugly and it looked so much better the way that it originally was. So number seven, never use aggressive remodel methods. And I see this every single day and it makes me so angry. It makes me angry for the house, it makes me angry for the community, and it makes me angry for the environment. And that's the power washer. You see all the time people busting out the power washer to just blow the paint off their house. And they got paint chips going everywhere. Well, if this is an old home, if this is a home built before 1978, that paint is most likely lead-based paint. And so you're blowing it everywhere, and not only you're harming yourself, because unless you've covered the ground completely, you're harming the home, one, because you're injecting way more water than that wood is designed to hold. And you're probably not going to give it enough time to dry. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that unless you've covered you know, a one block radiance with tarp, you're not going to catch all the lead chips that you're blowing all over the place. And that means those lead paint chips are ending up in a yard end up a yard for a pet or a small child to chew on, to get on. Next, if you're not appropriately catching it, it's gonna wash out into the water, wash out into the, the city sewer. This is one, illegal, and two, extremely dangerous environmentally. Last thing, and this is the one I'm the most passionate about, the sledgehammer. All over TV you see renovators and famous people breaking out the sledgehammer and just going to town tearing something up. And I'm sure it helps us work out some sort of fantasy for tearing up something, for being a man and swinging a hammer. I get it. And you see it's so popular with people wearing shirts saying Demo Day all over their shirts, right? Demo Day. You can buy a hammer that says Demo Day. You can buy an energy supplement that says Demo Day. How bizarre is that? Put the sledgehammer away. I know it's all over TV, but it's not needed. First and foremost, it actually damages the house when you break the sledgehammer out. Because to rock the house with a heavy sledgehammer like that, you're not only tearing apart the part that you hope to tear apart, you're actually damaging adjacent elements of the home. So just as a, as a structural thing, it's a terrible idea. But do you really need to demo it? 
Do you really need to? Do you really need to break it and tear it up? Do you really need to take the beauty of your home and throw it all in a dumpster? I want to encourage you, as I did in a couple rules before, to try to take your home as it is. To leave the sledgehammer behind and to find ways to renovate and restore your house that do as minimal damage to it as possible. Yes, you can upfit it. Yes, you can change it. Yes, you can modernize it. But if you find yourself needing a dozen 40 yard dumpsters to do that, I think you need to find yourself a different house because the house that you are gutting won't even be the same after you're done. And I don't mean that in a good way. So moment of truth in the comments below, let me know, have you ever broke any of the seven rules for restoration? I'll be honest, I've broken all seven. Let me know your experience and let the community know your experience. We're all friends here in the comments below. Thank you for watching Old Home Rescue where we help you get your house right. Remember there's no judgment from any of us here. We've all got it wrong before. But if you wanna help support our mission so that we can all get it right more often, please subscribe and share our channel with your friends. And remember the links for everything that I talked about, it's in the description below. Remember, you can RIY, rescue it yourself, and we're here to help.